In this video, we're going to have a look at what's called standard deviation. Now, what is standard deviation? Standard deviation is a measure of spread. You look at a data set and you can use standard deviation to decide how consistent or inconsistent the data is. If it's consistent, then there is not much spread. The numbers are quite similar. There's not much difference as you go from one uh, to the next. But if the standard deviation is large, that means that the numbers are deviating significantly from one another. There is a difference, there is quite a spread, quite a range within the data set. Now, in your National 5 formula list, you will come across two formulas for standard deviation. In this video, we're just going to look at how we would use this one here. Okay? Now, you're told that this formula recognizes n as the sample size. And you'll see that there are uh, x's as well. X just stands for um, a data element, so a piece of data, okay, in your data set. Um, sigma just means the sum of, okay. So you're just adding up all the bits of data. Okay, if you're trying to find the sum of x, for example. And I think that's about it. Okay, so you need to know what n is, the sample size. You need to know what x stands for. And you need to know what sigma signifies as well. Okay, now, let's have a look at a few examples. Let's say that you're asked to find the standard deviation for the sample below. Okay, so you have five numbers. Now, the way we're going to do this, we're going to do a table. A table with two columns, and in one column we're going to write down each of the data elements. Okay, so we're going to write, we're going to head that column with x. So we have five numbers, we have 44, we have 49, we have 50, we have 52, and finally 55. In the second column we're going to have each of these data elements squared. So we'll title that column x squared. So when we square 44, we get 1,936. Squaring 49, we get 2,401. Squaring 50, we get 2,500. Squaring 52, we get 2,704. Squaring 55, we get 3,025. Okay. Now, if you remember, the formula that we were looking at um, requires us to find the sum of x and the sum of x squared. So our formula is that the standard deviation is equal to the square root of all of this. So you have the sum of x squared. Then you subtract from that the sum of x, all squared, divided by sample size, and then the whole thing then is divided by n minus 1. Okay, that's our formula. Now, let's look at what this means first. This is just the sum of x, all the x values added up together. Okay, what does this mean? It's all the x squared values added up together, the sum of x squared. So we're going to have to adjust our table a wee bit to add in um, values for the sum of x and the sum of x squared. Okay, so to get the sum of x, all we do is add up each of these five values. And when we do that, we get 250. To get the sum of x squared, we just add up all of the x squared values, and we get that the sum of x squared is 12,566. Okay, now once you've done your table and you've got these two values, all you have to do then is just plug them into your formula, okay? Now the formula is given to you, it's in your formula list. All you need to do is just be able to interpret it, okay? So, notice that the square root sign takes in everything. You're square rooting everything you've got, okay? So, let's have a look. The sum of x squared, well that's just the larger of the two numbers, 12,566. Then you're taking away from that the sum of x all squared. So that's the sum of x squared, okay? You square the 250. 
And then you divide the whole thing by n. n is your sample size. So you have five numbers here. So that's five. And n minus one will be four. Now, on the calculator, a fail-safe way to do this is as follows. Okay? Do everything that's on the top line first, and then press equals. So 12,566 minus 250 squared divided by 5, press equals. Do it in a one -er. Don't bother with any brackets or anything. Just do the whole thing on the top line, press equals. Once you've done that, then divide it by 4, press equals again. And then once you've done that, square root the answer you've got. And you should end up with, to one decimal place, 4.1. Okay? So to one decimal place, 4.1. So just do what's on the top there separately, press equals, divide it by 4, press equals again, and then square root the whole thing, and then you get an answer of 4.1. Now the main place people go wrong is carelessness in adding up what goes into the table. So always double check all of your calculations to make sure that you haven't made a mess of it, okay? Because otherwise it's going to put your final answer wrong. Okay, now let's have a look at a couple of examples. Okay, here's a classic kind of question that you may get in a test or, an, or an exam. So the pulse weights in beats per minute of six adults in a hospital waiting area are as follows. Find the mean and the standard deviation of this data. So there are two things we've been asked to do in part A. Okay, so let's just do part A first of all, and we'll see how we get on. Okay, now. I'm going to prepare to find the standard deviation first of all, okay? And you'll see why in a wee minute. So this time we've got six numbers. So we'll do our table, make sure it's long enough to contain the six numbers, okay? So what have we got? We've got 68, 73, so this is going to be x, this is going to be x squared, 68, 73, 86, 72, um, 82, and 78. Okay, squaring all of these up, we get the following values 4,624, 5,329, 7,396, 5,184, 6,724, and 6,084. Okay. Now, once we've done that, we can then get our sum of x and sum of x squared, okay? Now, that's just the total of the two columns. So the sum of x in this case is going to be five, 459. And the sum of x squared is going to be 35,341, okay? Now, what were we asked to find? We were asked to find the mean, okay? So we try and find the mean, first of all, okay? So we're going to find the mean. The mean, remember, is just the sum of all the data elements, which you've worked out already. That's 459, divided by the number of bits of data, which in this case is 6. So you do that, and you get an answer of 76.5, okay? Beats per minute. Okay, so that's the mean dealt with. Now let's find the standard deviation. The standard deviation is going to be the square root of all that follows in here. Okay, we're going to have the sum of x squared. Okay, so I'll just write down the formula just now. Sum of x squared minus the sum of x all squared, divided by n, and you're dividing everything by n minus 1. So what does that give you? It's going to be the square root of 35,341 minus 459, divided by n, in this case it's 6, and then you divide the whole thing by 5. Okay? Divide the whole thing by 5. Remember the square root sign takes in everything. Okay? So, Again, just like we mentioned earlier on, what I want you to do is do the top row and remember to square that bit. I forgot to write that down. So you do the top row. So do three, 35,341 
minus 459 squared divided by 6, press equals. Once you've done that, divide by 5, press equals again, then square root what you've got in the calculator, and to one decimal place, you should end up with an answer of 6.7. Okay, 6.7. Now, there are no units here because we're just talking of um, how far apart the data is, the data elements are from one another. Okay, now remember what we said about standard deviation. A small standard deviation means that the data is, cons is consistent, there's not much um, spread, um, the numbers are all quite close. Okay, so I want you to bear in mind your two answers so far. Okay, we found that the standard deviation is 6.7, we've also found that the mean is 76.5. Now you're also told in part B that six children in the same waiting area have a mean pulse rate of 89.6 beats per minute and a standard deviation of 5.4. And you're then asked to make two valid comparisons between the children's pulse rates and those of adults, okay? So our first comment has to be to do with the mean pulse rates. Now, what can we say? The children had a mean pulse rate of 89.6, the adults had a mean pulse rate of 76.5. So your first comment is just going to be that the children, the pulse rate of the children, uh, the mean pulse rate is higher, okay? So we'll just say mean pulse rate is higher for children than adults, okay? Something along those lines would be sufficient for commenting on the mean. Now the second thing you've got to comment on is a standard deviation. Now, the key word you want to use here is consistent. Now, we have a standard deviation for the adults of 6.7. The standard deviation for the children is 5.4. So, a lower standard deviation means more consistent data. Okay, so our conclusion is that the children's, standard, the children's pulse rates are more consistent. Okay, it doesn't tell you whether they are higher or lower on average or whatever, but we are talking about consistency here, measure of spread, that's what the standard deviation is. So the children's pulse rates are more consistent. Okay, and that keyword of consistency is what we're looking for. Okay, so the children's pulse rates are more consistent. Okay, now you could also phrase that in different ways. You could say the adults' pulse rates are less consistent. So there's more than one way of seeing uh, what they're looking for here. But try, if you can, to use this keyword, consistent. Okay, because that shows that you understand what standard deviation is. Okay, now we're going to have a look at one more question. Again, just taken from a past paper. A classic standard deviation question. I'd like you guys to try it yourselves. Find the mean uh, price of a litre of milk. Find the standard deviation of the prices. And then make some conclusions in part C. Okay. So your own time uh, to do this question. You can just press pause. See how you get on. And then you can check back and see uh, if you got the question correct. Okay. Remember to be careful when it comes to squaring each of your bits of data and finding the sum total for each column, okay? So, now that you've done this question yourself, let's have a look and see how we got on, okay? Now, just in the interest of time, I'm going to go straight to do question, or part B of the question first of all, okay? And then we'll come back to part A later on, okay? So, we've got our column, our table with two columns. We're going to have one entitled X, and the other entitled x squared, okay? So x and x squared. Now our data elements are this time 49, 44, 41, 52, 47, and 43, okay? And once you square each of these values, you get 2,401, you get 1,936, you get 1,681, you get 2,704, 
you get 2,209 and you get 1,849. Okay. Now, once we do all that, we can then find the sum of x and the sum of x squared. Okay. So the sum of x, when you add it all up, you should get a value of 276. And all the bits of data squared and added up together, the sum of x squared is 12,780. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to go back to question A, and we'll say that the mean is just going to be the sum total of all the data, which we did in this column. It's 276. And we divide all of that by the number of bits of data, which is 6 in this case, and we find the mean is 46 pence. Okay? 46 pence. All right, which sounds sensible and reasonable, given the data we were given. To find the standard deviation, our standard deviation uh, is going to be the sum of x squared minus the sum of x all squared divided by n, and you divide the whole thing then by n minus 1. Okay, so if we sub in the values, the sum of x squared, the larger of our two numbers down here, is going to be 12,780. Then you take away 276 squared divided by n, which is 6. So that means that you're going to divide the whole thing then by 5, because n minus 1 would be 5, and then finish things off by square rooting the whole thing. Now, what do we do then? Remember what I said? Do the top row separately, work it all out, press equals, and then divide by 5, press equals again, and then square root the answer you get, and you end up to one decimal place with an answer of 4.1. Okay, 4.1. Um, so, that's you found the standard deviation, and you've also found the mean. Now, again, you have to make a comment. Fiona also checks the price of a kilo of sugar in the same shops and finds the standard deviation to be 2.6. Make one valid comparison between the two sets of prices. Now, obviously, our comment is going to be to do with standard deviation. Now, you will not get the mark if all you say is the standard devi deviation of the sugar is lower than that of, what was it, milk. Okay, you can't just say something along those lines. You have to show that you understand what standard deviation is. A standard deviation is a measure of spread. The lower the standard deviation, the less spread, the more consistency. So what we say is that the prices... Uh, the sugar prices are more consistent. Okay, something along those lines. The sugar prices are more consistent. And you can see that word coming up again. Now you can say the sugar prices are more consistent because the standard deviation is lower um, if you want a fuller statement. But that just now um, would be sufficient, okay? So you have to show that you understand what standard deviation is a measure of if you're looking to get that final question correct. Okay, so that's standard standard deviation. So just remember to be careful how you go about working out, uh, squaring all the data elements, totaling up your two columns, and be careful as well with the calculator when it comes to um, working out what the standard deviation is. And make sure, of all things, that you copy the formula down correctly. It's there for you in your formula sheet. All you've got to do is know how to use it. Okay? So, hopefully that will mean that standard deviation questions will now no longer pose any kind of problem. All right?